there's two types of people in the world. There's the ones that love coffee and the ones that hate coffee and never drink it. However, I would imagine that most of you can agree with me. When you open up a new can of coffee and you peel back that freshness seal and you take a whiff, there's something about it that you have to love. Now, some people can't stand it. I think it's one of the greatest things in the world. But I bet you all know this. I want you to answer this question for me. What's next? Hold your door toss in your cup. Right. You got it, right? The best part of waking up is folders in your cup, right? Of course. Very good. Everybody knows that. Why? Because so many people drink coffee. I'm going to talk to you a little bit of today about coffee and about the Mr. Coffee coffee maker. And I know that seems like a strange topic. The reason is, though, I'm an entrepreneur and I love coffee. And the Mr. Coffee coffee maker actually is an American success story in entrepreneurialism. Dealing with one of my favorite subjects, coffee. So Mr. Coffee is going to be the focus, but we're going to start out by talking a little bit about coffee itself first. And you'll see the need for why Mr. Coffee became such an important part of American culture. I actually grew up in my grandma's store. She had a corner store in Chicago. This is not a picture of it, but that's the feel you get when you think of my grandma's store. It was in the city, north side, and uh, I, I was pretty much raised there. Now, the funny thing is, this was my introduction to coffee, because my grandma's store was one of the places that supplied the coffee to the neighborhood. The funny thing for me was, whenever I got my face dirty at about five or six years old, my grandma would take a napkin, dip it under the coffee, and clean my face off. So I got my first taste and my first smell of coffee at about six years old. I, I didn't think she was trying to burn me with it, but maybe that was her plan too. <laughs> Another part of this is, I actually am involved in a company that represents Java Fit, and it's a very unique coffee and an awesome product. So I've had to do a lot of research because I sell coffee as well. One of the most amazing things about coffee, according to Java Fit, as of April 15th, 110 million Americans habitually drink coffee. 110 million Americans habitually drink coffee. So chances are the guys in here, the ladies in here, are on the same side I am, that you probably love coffee. Another thing is, Starbucks is awesome. Absolutely. Everybody likes Starbucks that drinks coffee. The problem is, in times like this, when we're penny pinching, it's hard to decide. One cup of Starbucks coffee, two gallons of gas, right? <laughs> so this is where Mr. Coffee entered in. One of the things was they wanted to be able to move coffee drinking into the home. For most of us, it doesn't make any sense because that's what we grew up on, that coffee was always available. However, what Mr. Coffee was attempting to do was bring the coffee maker home. Then next I'll tell you a little bit about the concept of the Mr. Coffee Maker. And then I'll talk a little bit about the impact that they had as an entrepreneur, uh, entrepreneurial company and as a product unique to America. So first a little bit about coffee. Um, I had to double check this on Wikipedia. My, some of my research kind of hit a dead end, so I did have to go back to the internet a little bit. But as of uh, April 18th, I double checked this fact on the internet. Coffee was discovered in Yemen and in northeast Ethiopia. And the first evidence of coffee being, uh, being consumed as a beverage is about the 15th century in Sufi monasteries in Yemen. And that was pretty much where it first became a, a, a drink that everybody wanted. It moved then into, your, into Italy first, then into Europe, then into Indonesia, and then came to America. Some interesting facts about coffee is coffee is the second most traded commodity in the world behind crude oil. It's number two. So coffee is a huge commodity in the world. Two billion cups of coffee are consumed worldwide every day. That's a lot of coffee drinkers. 110 million of them here in the United States. Coffee is the second most consumed beverage in the world as well. Water being the only thing that surpasses coffee. The problem with getting a good cup of coffee was, one, you had to go out to get it. It wasn't available at home. Now, I'm going to take you a step back a little bit. First and foremost, in the old days, the old, old days, the way you made coffee was you put the grounds right in the water and boiled it over the campfire. 
what happens when you pour yourself a cup of coffee? You got, that's where the idea of mud and sludge came from when referring to coffee. Then, again, I had to double check on Wikipedia. Uh, as of April, I double checked that the percolator was actually invented by Benjamin Thompson around 1785. That is kind of a long time ago. The original percolator was one that you heated on the stove. The concept was you put the water in and the grounds on top and you heated the water through the, per through the grounds and you percolated the coffee. Problem was the first pass of the water made coffee. Coffee comes back down, you're boiling more coffee back up into the coffee. So what happens is you tend to get a very bitter, nasty cup of coffee similar to mixing the grounds in with the water. It was an improvement but not much of one. This is what Mr. Coffee was attempting to fix. Um, <clears throat> Again, too, I like percolated coffee. However, there's a limit to the number of cups you can make, too. If you, and now everybody doesn't use a little normal cup anymore. We're all walking around with big mugs. You have two or three people come over. You're making a couple of pots. Mr. Coffee wanted to have a, a situation where they could make enough coffee at one time that everybody could enjoy it. So one of the things Mr. Coffee did was turn it into a 12 cut. 12 cup pot, but using the same amount of coffee grounds. And that'll, that'll become more significant later. Another part of the coffee, Mr. Coffee Machine, was that the water would be boiled and then poured through the grounds one time, thus making a more pure, better, richer flavored, smoother tasting coffee. It wasn't being reboiled through the, through the grounds. The other part was it was convenient and it was clean. Whereas the percolator, you actually have to open up and dump out the, the remaining grinds and refill it and wash it. This, you just take out the filter and throw it away. Okay, now that we have a little bit better understanding of why Mr. Coffee was a good idea and needed in the home, let's go over some of the facts and some of the things that Mr. Coffee brought into this, uh, into this realm in America. 1972, Vincent Murata and Samuel Glazer in Cleveland, Ohio, introduced Mr. Coffee through North American Systems. In that same year, they brought out their invention, the first automatic drip coffee maker. In 1975, and this is the key as to where it becomes a major brand and an icon for the United States, in 1975, Mr. Coffee coffee makers went from 1,000 to 38,000 sales a day. I mean, can you imagine that? Now that's how you brand a product, and that's how something becomes part of our culture. 38,000 coffee makers a day were being sold under the Mr. Coffee brand. These are some of the innovations that sealed Mr. Coffee as being one of the top entrepreneurial um, companies in this area. In 1975, they were the first to introduce coffee filters to the market. So prior to that, and it's, I was really struck by the, by the years that this occurred. I figured this went way back as, you know, it was the middle 70s when my grandma was still making the coffee in the huge percolator for the store. 1980, and this is one of my key points that I want to point out. In 1980, Mr. Coffee added programmable timers to their coffee makers to benefit consumers. It was Mr. Coffee that introduced the concept of being a morning person. So the McDonald's commercial, don't talk to me until I've had my coffee. Folgers, the best part of waking up is their tagline that everybody knows. It was all brought about by Mr. Coffee. They put that trend into society. It wasn't something normal. You know, coffee was after dinner at night. Now, who's, we all got our cup of coffee in the morning, right? Uh, in 1986, they developed the pause and serve feature, which allowed consumers to serve a cup before the entire pot was brewed. I don't know that this was necessarily a good thing, but we're a fast food society. And in a fast food society, we want our food right now. Now, the cold pot doesn't even have to be brewed. You can pull it right out, pour a cup, put it back, and it'll restart where it was. 